my name is Sam Slupski. I am a writer and creator here in Austin, Texas, um, and I am going to take you through a little mini workshop um, about writing poetry and what all of that entails. And so the things that you're going to need for this workshop are um, a place to write, um, whether that be your computer or a notebook or just a scrap piece of paper, um, just something to write with. Um, we're going to be like taking a few little notes and so um, yeah, just have something that you can do that with. Um, and then just like your willingness to be open and vulnerable because I think um, that's something about poetry that um, is really necessary is being willing to be vulnerable. Um, but something I want to debunk about poetry a little bit is that I think that a lot of people think that it's like this really visceral, um, it's like this really visceral emotional thing and it like totally can be. Um, but I am going to like break it down a little bit. Um, I guess I don't want to say simpler than that, but I'm just going to break it down a little bit. And so today we're going to be writing an ode, um, which essentially is just like a love letter to something that we care about, um, or something that, um, yeah, something that we love. Um, so the first thing I want you to do is on that scrap piece of paper on your computer, whatever you have to write down, um, your list, write down three things that, um, have nourished you or three things that you care about. Um, the things that I picked were red onions, um, candles that smell like pipe tobacco or like burning tobacco or just like woody, musky candle scents. Those, I am obsessed with those. Um, or I also chose a poster in my house that, um, says it's okay to feel things. And my process looks a lot like picking things that I'm like kind of obsessed with right now. Um, I think there's like some weird conversations about like, writing about the same things, but I love writing about the same things. I think that, um, I think it's really important to just kind of like honor the things that make you who you are. And so, um, I'm going to use, a uh, out of my list, I'm going to use a red onion, um, which the thing that I really love about odes is that it can be just like the simplest things in our lives that we write an ode to, because I really believe that it's through writing poetry that we, um, like more truths get revealed as we write poems. And so that's kind of the writing process or like beginning the writing process of writing a poem is picking a topic, picking what kind of poem you want to write. And so we're going to write a note and I'm going to write a note about an onion. And so I already wrote this poem. <laughs> Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's really short. And that's another thing I want everyone to know about writing a poem is that it can be really short. And so the poem I wrote is entitled Red Onion. And keep, keep this poem in mind whenever you're, um, if you wrote down things that, um, have nourished you in the past, just like start thinking about the senses associated with that thing. Um, and so my poem is called Red Onion. A base coat to all my colorful dishes, the most necessary in the holy trinity, often thought of as second to garlic, the Maillard's reaction's best friend, sweet and supple, the root that is most overlooked. You adorn everything you touch with zing and bite. Olive oil sings to the kiss of you, a symphony called nourishment. You turn tender with warmth and time. So. Now we're gonna go into the editing part. Um, like I said, this is a super spe sped up version of a writing um, workshop. Usually this takes like, this process can take like two hours. And so I'm just trying to give the snippets for you. And so we're going to move into the editing process. And so I really wanna zoom in on the first line of my poem. So something that I learned in a writing workshop is um, we start with the truth and then write the poetry. And so with something as simple as a red onion, what is the truth about a red onion? Or just an onion. With an onion, it's the first thing that I usually put in every dish. Um, 
And so like the original first line of this poem was, onions are the start to all of my dishes. That's that, that was the truth. And then I break apart a line and I'm like, okay, what are other ways to say this line? Um, I broke it down and I got weird with it. I was like, onions are the bottom sheet to all of my dishes. I don't know. The onions are the first layer to all of my dishes. But then eventually I landed on a base coat to all of my colorful dishes. Um, so it both encompasses the truth, but also brings some poetry into it. Um, and I think, I think that that's something that's really important is that like you can't write a, po a poem without, I guess you can't, poems can be fictitious, but um, the poems that I love the most are like based in truth and based in our experiences. And so the first line of my poem is a base coat to all of my colorful dishes. Um, and then I brought all of the senses into it. Pick the thing, the thing that you um, picked for your poem, whatever nourishes you, whatever you care about. Um, write down all of the senses that are associated with that. What does it smell like? Does it have a taste? What does it sound like? Do you, are there any, what does it feel like? You know, just all of the senses associated to it. Because I think one of the best parts about an ode is, um, you know, bringing all the senses into it, really getting the reader invested in this thing that you also love. Um, and so with my poem about my onion, I was like, okay, what are all the things that an onion can be? It can be sweet. I think that they're supple. They can be zingy if they're raw, you know, they have bite if they're raw, but they also are tender. And so I really leaned into all of the like, um, specific words about how, um, onions taste and how they feel and so like I said bring all the senses into it and honestly I use the sources a lot <laughs> whenever I'm writing poems so don't be afraid to like take a word and then use the thesaurus and see if there are any other words that like fit um more perfectly and so the next part about editing is I think about um syntax and the way that words are used in poems um there are lines in my poems where I say, um, you adorn everything you touch with zing and bite. Olive oil sings to the kiss of you. And originally that line was, you adorn everything you touch with zing and bite. Olive oil sings to the touch of you. But I knew that I didn't want to use touch twice. Um, I knew that there were a lot of other words I could use. And so I was like, what? Um, what are other words that I can use? And so I landed on the word kiss um, because I just really love the idea of like onions kissing olive oil, you know? Um, in a place of something like sizzle, I used sing because I think, again, personifying um, an inanimate object is one of my favorite things to do in an ode poem. And so I got to the final draft of the poem where I felt good enough to put it into the world. Um, and really that ultimately can mean whatever you want it to. Um, backing up a little bit. So you write the poem, you draft it, you edit it with like breaking it apart, figuring out syntax, using different words. You know, there are so many other ways to do it. Um, but that's, this, that's the process that I often use. And again, really sped up process, but I think that those are the fundamentals. Um, and so with an ode, um, I really like to get people excited about the other things that I love. That's one of the things I really um, adore about odes is that it's like I get to write this thing and then tell someone else why I love it. And I think that that is like a grand connector is just um, getting excited about the same things or th about the same things for different reasons. I just think that odes are really great for that reason. Um, poems are really great for that reason. And so we move into like the sharing process. Um, first and foremost, if you don't want to share, if you just want poems to be like your own personal thing, that is absolutely valid. And um, I held my poems close to me for a really long time. But a note on sharing and submitting. Um, I think that there's a lot of fear around sharing work and submitting, submitting it for publication um, because there's like a lot of like, fears of rejection or not being good enough, but I want to validate that you are good enough. Um, 
like there I guess there there's people want to read your work um and so submitting and sharing could look like putting it on Instagram going on Instagram live and reading it out loud to people um it can look like starting a newsletter and sharing your poems in that um it can look like finding publications to send it to um so I just want to validate that there are many ways to share your poems if it is something that you want to put out in the world because there is something really amazing um, and vulnerable about sharing our work, but I think, like I said, poetry is a really good connector and brings us together. So I want to, I want to encourage you to do that because your story is a gift. So I will leave you with the original prompt for this workshop, um, which is write an ode to a, write an ode or a love letter to something that has nourished you. I'll say that again. <laughs> write an ode or a love letter to something that has nourished you. For a bonus, incorporate all of the senses into a poem. Um, yeah, that's that's what I've got for you. Um, I hope that this was helpful and that you start writing or continue writing, whatever that looks like for you. Um, happy editing and happy writing.